Hi, this is a small series on my recent travels in Japan in 2023, and a mini guide to anyone looking to visit in the near future. I'll put a link for the first video in the description if you haven't seen it. We went to Tokyo and it was pretty cool. But otherwise, let's begin. The new day needed to start with something unique, a food that we'd never tried before, and one that would be something you couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah, okay, we went back and got more curry bread, but hey, it was delicious, so what can I say? After stopping in another Ville de France for buns just outside of Akihabara Station, we did some brief shopping and grabbed some delicious street food before checking out of our hotel and heading for Tokyo Station, where we boarded a bullet train for Kyoto. If you come to Japan, experiencing the Shinkansen should definitely be on your itinerary if you plan to visit multiple prefectures. It's definitely a bit expensive, but absolutely beautiful. And going south from Tokyo, we were able to capture a nice glimpse of Mount Fuji over the horizon. After arriving in Kyoto, we checked into our accommodation, this beautifully renovated Kyo Machia in the center of town. We were renting for a small group, but in truth, the four-story structure could probably sleep up to 12 people or more if needed for a very reasonable price. I'll put links for all the places we stayed on our trip down below in case you want to check them out. We usually used Booking.com, but for this particular Kyo Machia, we ended up using Airbnb and it worked out great. At this point, the evening had rolled in, and as lanterns began to glow in the dusk, we sat down at a cozy restaurant for some delicious Thai food, which I was trying for the first time. As expected, it was really good. Now, probably a bit unusually, we decided to visit the famous Fushimi Inari Shrine at night, and though the forest and many of the buildings were bathed in thick shadows in a blanket of darkness, there was something so calming about scaling the mountain of Tori gates without the hassle of other tourists, as well as the evanescent glow of warm lights illuminating the path. Kyoto is very peaceful at night, and the streets are beautiful to walk around after the sun sets and most of the tourists are gone. It proved to be one of my favorite times to walk the city. Day 2 in Kyoto started with a trip to Teramachi, the city's main outdoor shopping area, and into a cafe for breakfast of amu rice and curry. Now no matter what anyone tells you, in Japan you can get huge portion sizes if you go to the right place. Like in any country, it just depends on how much you order and the restaurant you're going to. As a result, I had some calories to burn, and leaving the city center to visit the famous Arashiyama Bamboo Grove, we happened upon the Kyoto Monkey Park nestled conveniently halfway up a mountain. This made very short work of my meal as I dragged myself in the 90 degree heat up the slopes until at last we got to the open clearing, where immediately monkeys began appearing everywhere. Here it's the people kept in cages for the monkeys to see, and it's strongly advised not to have any food or objects on you lest you be dragged into the forest or your belongings taken in swift motion by these curious creatures. In any case, it was really neat to see them, behaving much like humans with their children running around, and then after some interacting with them and admiring the view over Kyoto, we headed back down the mountain towards Arashiyama. Down at the mountain base, the area is probably one of my favorite places we visited in Japan during the trip. The open landscape is lined with traditional homes and people venturing down the Katsuda River in small boats under the heat of the sun. With this, we took a short walk up a hilly road and entered Arashiyama Bamboo Grove.
Venturing further down, we visited Tenryuji, a breathtaking Zen Buddhist temple which dates back to 1339, when ruling shogun Ashikaga Takauji had it constructed and dedicated to the former emperor Go Daigo. Although the buildings themselves were lost to fire and warfare over the centuries, the garden has miraculously maintained its original form into the modern day and is a sight to see. Returning to the city center, Kyoto Castle was next, greeting us with its large moat and parted gates. Though the main building was closed for renovation, we were still able to tour some structures on the property, explore the gardens, and climb to the ruins of the defense tower to get a gorgeous view of the city. It had been a long day, but before we turned in for the evening, we made sure to visit Kyoto's very unique international manga museum. The museum is located in an old school building and filled with all sorts of nostalgic displays and rather interesting exhibits as well. Probably my favorite room was the large manga library, which showcased series from the earliest iterations of the art form to the modern day. All books could be taken off of the shelves and read, and chances are whatever manga you're looking for, They've got it here. With the museum complete, we made our way to get some delicious Korean barbecue for dinner, which was cooked over a simmering pot, and then made our way back to the hotel for the night. Over the next few days in Kyoto, it rained a lot, so we did quite a bit of shopping in Teramachi, which luckily had a roof over our heads. Now there's a lot of neat music stores and even this cool little owl exhibit on one of the upper floors. I never knew you had to use the back of your hand to stroke an owl's head, but that's apparently the correct way to pet the ones here. The person at the store said they let them fly freely at night, which I'm really glad about since they spend the whole day in that space, and it is a bit small. When the rain let up a bit outside, we were able to take a taxi and visit the famous Kiyomitsu Dera, an incredible structure that looks out over the mountains and offers some of the best views around the city. It was one of my personal favorites of the trip. Now one thing to note in Kyoto is that the train system is not as widespread as bigger cities, so you might find yourself needing to walk, ride a taxi, or take a bus to get around where the subway doesn't reach. Much of the city sits outside of the normal train stops, and with several of our hotels we realized getting around would be a bit more work than in Tokyo, so it helps to build some extra travel time into your plans when you visit. Our last meal in Kyoto was some fried chicken and chili fries that we ate at a small bar around 9 o'clock at night. We stopped there after walking through the rain for an hour, and it was delicious. Plus, the staff were fantastic and very friendly. The next morning, we packed our things, spent a bit of time in the very nice hotel room we had booked, and took the bus to Kyoto Station, where we departed on the short train ride to Osaka for the next big leg of our trip. After we checked into our new hotel, we stepped back onto the subway and boarded the train for one of the most anticipated places of the entire trip. Not a park. Nara Park was established in 1880 and has since become one of the premier destinations for travel in Japan due to its large population of casually friendly deer. Hundreds of them can be seen at any time walking and interacting with tourists, and many will even bow to you. With about 200 yen in your pocket, you can also purchase these little deer crackers, which they will jump all over you to get if you're not careful as they are no strangers to food. I know they made a grab at my backpack and I saw a lot of high schoolers trying to run away from them, which was pretty funny. There are also some neat museums in the park which showcase religious artifacts as well as an outdoor shopping mall nearby. I picked up one of these cute Nara deer t-shirts before we ventured down to a cozy restaurant to have some delicious eel over steamed rice for dinner before heading back to the hotel for the evening. It was one of our first more relaxed days of the trip when we didn't walk like 10 miles, and an absolute delight to see all the deer in person. I definitely recommend it for your travels. 
In the next video, we'll be exploring Osaka and going back to Tokyo for the last leg of our trip, including the Ghibli Museum. Kyoto and Nara were both incredible places to visit and I can't wait to go back. There's still so much more to explore. Well, let me know, have you ever been to either one? And if so, what were your favorite things to do? If not, where would you want to go? Let me know in the comments below, but as always, like, subscribe, and thanks so much for watching.